UL Lafayette post-game press conference. We have head coach Tony Robichaux, student athlete Seth Harrison, Cody Booty, and Jace Conrad. Uh, first, coach, uh, we'll start with an opening statement from you, please. Well, I mean, you talk about a long day. Uh, 9.30 this morning was chapel for us, breakfast. Now it's almost midnight. So it's, it's, if that's not the definition of grinders, I, I don't know what it is. Uh, these guys grinded, grinded the day like, like we expected them to and that we knew they would. And so we got good pitching in game one. Uh, that tackle on a two-hour rain delay. Uh, Sharp and Shea did a great job for us. Our hitters did a good job. We played great defense again. Uh, Hicks came in, did a great job for us. Didn't let the momentum change after the rain delay. Sometimes that momentum can change after a rain delay like that. And then tonight's game, our fans showed up. We got a lot of adrenaline working with our hitters. And uh, our hitters just did an exceptional job tonight of taking over the game at home plate. Cody did a great job of getting us off to a good start. Minimized his damage along the way. And, uh, you know, bullpen it to the back end right there and, and, and got it done. So, you know, tonight we'll get some sleep and get ready to go tomorrow. Questions for the student athletes? <coughs> Jace, if you would just talk, talk a little bit about your day. I mean, you were just feeling it, I guess. Or just tell us what, what you were seeing at the plate. Um, I'm, I, I honestly don't know what it was. Uh, I didn't have too hot of a game the past two games before these, and I left some runners on base. Didn't help my, I mean, especially the first game, I didn't give my team a good chance to win. I didn't come up big like I needed to, so I was just trying to come out here today, have some fun, and try and put up some runs for us. You know, our hitters did a great job today. Our pitchers did a great job. Just as a, as a team, we executed just about as good as you can execute, and uh, it's time to get ready for more. Cody, can you talk about that critical third inning? It, you know, you gave up three runs, the game was tied, and just a critical juncture of the game. Talk about how you buckled down and, and got out of it. I think uh, this, this game's all about pushes. Who can make the biggest push? And uh, when, once that inning happened, I, I got into the dugout and realized that that's probably going to be the one big push, and I've got to come back and throw up some zeros and let my hitters keep doing the job because they were phenomenal today. You don't know how easy it is to throw b b right behind 14 runs. All you got to do is throw strikes. And um, all my credit goes out to my hitters. They did a phenomenal job. Um, again, it's extremely easy to throw behind 14 runs. Austin threw a phenomenal game and gave up one run, and I had 14. So luckily my hitters came with it today, and um, I'm just I'm grateful for that. <clears throat> Seth, how much uh, how much do you think of that's just kind of carried over for that first game when there really was uh, you know no no break in that? Um, I mean from the first game to the second game, uh, we after the first game ended, we we were done with that. We, we were concentrated on Mississippi State, and uh, we knew the guy that they were throwing was going to be the same type of guy, same arm that uh, Jackson State threw the first game. So we had a, a pretty good idea about what our approach needed to be, and. Um, we just wanted to come and show them whose field this is and whose home it is, and we, we, we gave it to them tonight. Jace, for you guys, I, guys, I, I know going in after Friday was sort of, well, it's just a, a four-game win streak. That's all you need. You're, you're one game away now. Just, just the mindset of being able to weather the storm, and now, now you're nine innings away from where you want to be. Yeah. We, um, like, like they said, we are – Today's over with, you know. We're, we're concentrated on tomorrow. After Friday's game, we didn't we didn't come out ready to play. We talked about it and it reminded us a lot of opening night. We just came out a little too amped up, you know, kind of underestimating our opponent. Not 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 saying that, not thinking that they couldn't beat us, but we thought we were definitely going to come out and put more runs up than zero of them. But at the same time, that's baseball. You're going to have that from time to time. We're fortunate enough to come out today, win two games. We're going to move on to tomorrow and uh, try to finish this thing out. Seth, you kind of talked a little, about it a little bit, but how, how did helping, uh, how did facing a guy like uh, Jackson State throw out there, kind of a slow, soft tosser, Ross Mitchell, similar type guy, doesn't give up a lot of runs, but you guys got to him. Did that help knowing kind of what his MO was and how it was similar to the Jackson State guy? Yeah, I think uh, anytime you can 
face a pitcher that is, I guess, similar. Um, just like today, Jackson State threw a couple soft throwing pitchers, uh, the right hander towards the end of the game, and then they also had the lefties. I mean, that really kept us staying back and working to the opposite field. So I think uh, once it was time for Mississippi State, we were just all locked in and ready to go. So. All right, thank you guys. You can come around and get thank out you. of here. Questions for Coach? Even, even though it was different pitchers game one and game two, just, just the confidence that they gained at the plate yesterday and then carried over to earlier today, how much did that sense kind of carry into tonight? Well, that was big. You know, I mean, we, we really we got back to our approach, and that's, that's the whole key. You know, uh, if our whole motto in the AIT is attitude, and the second A is approach. And we, our approach was not good enough opening night, and uh, it did us in. And uh, they went back to their approach. And when they have their approach, they're a tough team to, to deal with, one through nine, and that showed today. And, you know, sometimes when you play a doubleheader like that, it's also good because you've been playing all day, you just keep on playing. A lot of times you can sit around in a hotel and come play just one game, and sometimes the advantage goes to the team that actually has been playing all day. And so that's the way we took it, is that we play game one, get ready, and go right into game two. But I think our approach – uh, after opening night changed, and, and I think that's what's made us a better hitting team. Taking a look at the pitching, I mean, you're, you're stockpiled for tomorrow. How, how big was Hicks's effort going way over his, his typical pitch count, and then also Booty just kind of setting you up for tomorrow? Well, you know, we knew with Matt and his back that, you know, if he could, if he could take it and finish it, and uh, he's usually good for about 50 pitches, and he got around 48 or 49 and said, you know, sit the bullpen down, I'm going to go ahead and you know, finish this no matter what. So, you know, we appreciate that out of him. And, and Booty tried to go as long as he could for us without having to use anybody. But uh, we did get get some extension out of out of both of those guys, which definitely helped us for tomorrow. And Tony, what about um, Carter? A little bit of an unsung guy, but for him to do that in that circumstance, what did it take, do you think, for him to get through it? Well, it's huge. You know, I, I'm, I'm glad for him. You know, right before he got here from junior college last year, his dad passed away, and so he's he's had a tough go at it. So that, that was good for him tonight to come in as a senior like that and, and, and get the job done. When facing a guy like, uh, well, I guess a couple guys today that pitch to contact tomorrow, they're going to feature at some point probably Jacob Lindgren, Lindgren guy who makes bats miss, how does your mindset, or what do you tell your guys to maybe switch that mindset a little bit? Well, the, the big thing I think we got to try to do tomorrow is, is just remember that this is evened up now. And so uh, we got to go out there and, and uh, play with just, you know, our, our mindset, our approach. Uh, coach will, will get together and look at what he's, what he's done and, and uh, fix our players' approach. But, you know, the big thing we try to do is we, we try to go after – and try to take away somebody's fastball. I mean, we were fortunate enough to do that a couple times this weekend. And so we'll, we'll try to do the same thing with him. Um, the whole key with us is that, you know, is we study the pitcher. If the pitcher is really good, a swing and miss guy, then we try to take him down collectively because you're not going to take a guy like that down. Coach calls him Buffaloes. Uh, you don't take a Buffalo down by yourself. It's going to take, you know, all nine of the guys with a good approach to be able to take a guy like that down. So. You know, he'll look at everything, and tomorrow during BP, we'll hit accordingly. Today, he did a great job of throwing soft BP for our hitters today, and our hitters really did a good job of sitting in the middle of the field, attacking the monster, going to right center field with that soft stuff. And um, now we'll, we'll, we'll have to change our approach with whoever comes, you know, whoever steps up in that mound tomorrow. Who do you plan on starting tomorrow? Um, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> We, 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 right now, leaning on Ryan Wilson. So that's that's what my gut tells me right now. So we'll sleep on it. And, uh, we got a couple guys on standby, but, but that's what my gut's saying. All right.